to move, move up. We have such a small, intimate crowd tonight. Um, so uh, I'll just ask if anybody parked in the church parking lot. Um, I tell the story every year, but they lock the gates sometimes unexpectedly, and uh, we've had guests get trapped in the lot and have to spend the night in a motel. So, but it sounds like we're all good. So, well, I, I'm going to read my speech like we have a crowd of 200. Um, I want to thank you all for coming here tonight on this surprisingly rainy afternoon. And um, we have some wonderful violas and bows to try and a wonderful artist. Um, I'd also like to welcome our guests who have tuned into our Facebook live stream. And um, I want to also thank the makers that have come here tonight, some from as far away as Indiana and uh, Minnesota and Vancouver. Um, and I want to thank my staff. I'll read their names. Emily, Wesley, Alicia, Julia, Anthony, Teru, and Sean. They worked really hard to make this event a success. And uh, I'll have to say that Emily has done a lot of the organizing for this event, and Alicia has created that beautiful program, color program that you have in your hands. So this is our sixth annual Contemporary American Violin and Bowmaker uh, exhibition and sale. And our idea is to connect makers of fine instruments and bows with the large number of string players here in Southern California, uh, whether they be students, professionals, or amateurs. Uh, I think what makes this evening special is that uh, we have uh, a large number of instruments played quickly back to back so they can really hear the differences. And it's not very often that you have a, a professional that can uh, be with you when you're you know, choosing your instruments and bows. So this is a, a special event. We have 23 violas, six viola bows to compare this evening. Uh, we'll only spend about two minutes per instrument and about one minute per bow. Uh, then at the end, if there are two that you'd like to compare, just let us know and we can ask um, our soloists to go back and compare any pair that you'd like. Um, this evening, our event is being recorded uh, for future use by sound engineer um, Christian Amundsen here. And uh, he makes really beautiful high definition recordings uh, for orchestras all around the world. So afterwards, we'll have a reception across the way and we hope you can all join us. Um, hopefully some of you are here to try the violas and we'll be able to try those out in our practice rooms across the way. Uh, our staff are all wearing black aprons with gold lettering so you'll know who to ask. Um, potential buyers can check out instruments. Um, for now, we're just asking to limit it to three days, uh, but later on it could be for a longer period. Um, but for those of you who'd like to come back for a private audition later, these instruments and bows, for the most part, will be with us for the next three months. Uh, but you here tonight certainly have the best selection of anybody. So now for the good, good part. Uh, Taiwanese-American violist Chie Yin Chen has established himself as an active recitalist, chamber musician, recording artist, and educator. He's a founding member of the Formosa Quartet and recipient of the first prize and the Amadeus Prize of the 10th London International String Quartet Competition. Uh, Mr. Chen is professor of viola performance at UCLA and has recently joined the Ennis String Quartet. So let's welcome uh, Brian Cheyun Chen to the stage. Thank you. Yes, so the way we're, we're gonna do this is we're gonna, going to compare the bows first. Just about a minute per bow, and um, if you'd like to say a few words about your ideas on bow selection, and, um, you're welcome to make comments if you'd like. Sure. And as soon as we're done with the bows, we'll move on to the violas. And should we start with number one? Yeah, and okay. um, Mr. Chen is using one of the instruments from the show, but we can talk about the violas later. Yeah, so
So bow number one was made by Thomas Dignan in Boston. A cat model, 68.6 grams. Okay, thank you for being here. Um, this is a, a, a new experience for me. I am used to be the vessel for the composers, but today I'm trying to be the vessel for the instrument makers. And I'll try to stay as neutral as possible. And I'll try my best to make all the instruments sound good. Next, we have bow number two, made by Thomas Dignan, I'm sorry, Eric Gagné in Montreal, Canada, 71.1 grams. made by Lee Guthrie in Hudson, Wisconsin. Is that right? Yep. was made by Kang Hyun Paul Lee in Tustin, California, 70.1 grams.
show was made by David Samuels, uh, currently in Israel, 70.7 grams. was made by David Russell Young of Longmont, Colorado, and it's 71.1 grams. on to the violas now. You can put this bow away. Do you have any particular thoughts about any of these bows? They're all really well made and very well balanced. And I was choosing the repertoire. I was thinking whether I should do something fast to show the articulation or try to show the sound quality from the beginning of the, the, the frog to the tip. And I thought they're all really well made. And of course, I have my favorite, but I'm not going to be reveal them here. Yeah. And I think this is very personal. Uh, each player prefers different things. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I will take that one for you then. Sure. And we'll start with the viola made by Pablo Alfaro in Atlanta, Georgia. It was made in 2022. So it's 16 and one half inches in length. Which bow would you like? Which one? Okay, put them all away. <laughs> Could we have one bow back, please? <laughs> From the group. <laughs> Thank you. 
Bonjour. The next meal was made by Kenneth Beckman in Kansas City, 2021, 16 inches in length. Frederick Bethke from Minneapolis, uh, just finished this year, also 16 inches in length. Made by Andrew Carruthers of Santa Rosa, California, um, 
16 and a quarter inches, uh, finished last year. Thomas Coleman in Grays Lake, Illinois. It's a smaller instrument, 15 and three quarters inch, finished in 2021. Thank you. 
next viola was made by Douglas Cox in Brattleboro, Vermont, um, I think five years ago, 2017, and it's 16 inches. Michael Fisher here in Los Angeles. Michael's with us tonight. Um, it's a 16 and a quarter inch instrument made about four, four years ago, or five years ago.
Next, we have a viola made by Joe Grubach and Sigrun Seifert in Petaluma in uh, 2018, and it's 16 and one half inches. Jeffrey Haas in Albany, New York, uh, 2015, and it's 16 and 1 8 inches. Thank you. 
Michael. Next, we have a viola by Dirk Henry and Alex Reza of Omaha, Nebraska. Um, made in 2022, I believe. Uh, 16 and a quarter, I think. Philadelphia in 1976 is 16 and three quarters inches.
next feeler was made by Stephen Lohman in Fair Oaks, California. It's a 15 and 3 quarter inch instrument uh, made in 2022. Jeff Manthos in Corvallis, Oregon. It's 16 and a half inches long and finished this year. Thank you. 
This viola was made by John Osnes in Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, it's 15 and 7 8 inches long and uh, made last year. Next viola was made by Catalin Persanola in Eudora, Kansas. It's uh, 16 and a quarter inches long, uh, made a couple of years ago, I think 2021. Thank you. 
office of Kingwood, Texas, uh, made in 2020, I believe, uh, and it's 16 and 3 8 inches long. <laughs> A, a large viola made by Jeffrey Robinson. Uh, the program says Flagstaff, but this was actually made in Salt Lake City in 1983. <laughs> Yeah. 
by Logan Scott of Minneapolis, um, made in 2021, and it's uh, 15 and three quarter inches. And Bill, are you here? There you are. One of our few makers here tonight. <laughs> Theodore Screco of Indianapolis, Indiana. And I can tell you it's the best smelling viola we have tonight. <laughs> I think it was just varnished. Um, 16 and a quarter inches. Uh, sing us this here. Thank you. 
next viola was made by Timothy Somerville of Chicago, Illinois. It's um, 16 and, I'm sorry, lost my train of thought, 16 and a quarter, 16 and one eighth, I'm sorry, finished this year. Sophia Vettori uh, of Indianapolis uh, by way of Florence, Italy, and she's here with us tonight. Thank you. 
viola made by Chris White of Boston, Massachusetts, uh, 16 and a quarter inches, finished in 2022. To our last viola of the evening, we have one made by Uta Zahn of Minneapolis. It's um, made last year, and I believe it's 16 inches. Yes.
There was a car alarm during one recording, and if you don't mind doing one more, I think uh, for the sake of the maker, it might be nice to do one one more take. Do you remember which which Chris instrument White. that was? White. Chris White. Chris White. Yeah. Oh yeah. Does anybody want to hear two separate instruments? Someone, someone on the live stream asked for the Fisher and the Teller. Well, let's do the Fisher and the Keller, and then we'll come back and do another take of the... Well, let's do the take first, and then the camera crew can get, get going. Maybe we should do White and Greco. If you'd like to hear those two together, we'll do, we'll do the White, because that's the one that had the car alarm, and then we'll do the Greco. I believe this was the one that was interrupted. Uh, this is the Chris White okay. viola from Boston. Which would you prefer? Can we do these other two first? Sure. Okay. We had a request to compare the, the Fisher viola with the Keller. So this is the, what can we say? This is the Michael Fisher.
Which Keller wrote it? Is everybody good, or is there one last comparison? Uh, oh. Rico, what do we have? A fricko and a scot piano. Okay, you want to start with this? Um, Theodore Screcco first.